Good morning, everyone. Okay, another beautiful day starting out there. Uh, the sound is a little cloudy, a little echoey, but it's okay. Um, is there anybody here from another unity today? Raise your hand if you are. We have a special gift for you. Uh, anybody here for the first time? Raise your hand up high. We have a gift for you. All right, ushers down here. Keep your hand up so they can see you. Mm. Well, you've come to the right place today to be inspired. And that's what's going to happen because this talk is going to inspire you and give you joy and love and peace that you've been seeking. And uh, this guy says to his wife, I've been thinking about it and I, I want to be cremated. And uh, she made an appointment for him that Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Look forward to this talk. You're going to love it. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Unity of Boulder. Those of you who are joining us in person and those of you who are joining us online, thank you for joining us. Uh, I've got a few quick announcements of upcoming events here at Unity of Boulder. Um, today we are having a St. Patrick's Day themed potluck right over here in Fellowship Hall following this service. If you have a dish to bring, grab it, uh, run and grab it, bring it back. But even if you don't, please come join us for a meal just to hang out and chat, meet someone new. We always have a good time at these potlucks. Um, and so let's see, what else? That's it for that. Uh, our Easter show is coming up. We are going to have our both our Easter shows on Easter morning. We're going to add a 9 a.m. and an 11 a.m. service, um, and that's April 9th. Um, please grab tickets in the lobby or in the bookstore. It really helps us see how many people are coming and helps us kind of plan for it. Um, but yeah, grab an extra ticket for anyone who's never been here or a neighbor or a family member. Let them know that they're gonna see an Easter show the likes of which they're not gonna see anywhere else. Uh, that's put on by Jack and Norma, so please uh, be ready for that. But also about Easter is if you'd like to help out, be a volunteer to help us be an usher, help us with uh, making our palm crosses uh, the weekend before Easter, um, or help us with an all-church cleanup where we clean the inside of this building up, please go see uh, Elaine. Elaine, are you in here? Please see Elaine right over here in Fellowship Hall following this service, and she'll explain all the many ways you could help us out by volunteering for Easter. Um, so let's see here. Oh, tomorrow night. Uh, we are having our spring equinox celebration at 7 p.m. If the weather's nice enough, we'll do it outside, but more than likely we're going to do it inside in Fellowship Hall, and that's led by Norma. You don't have to sign up for that. You just hop on in and be ready for some singing, drumming, and chanting. It's a good time, um, so check that out. And next week, um, Sintisha will be taking the um, week off at the second service. It's actually going to be her brother, Shad Groverland, who's going to be our speaker. He's visiting us from St. Louis's, or um, Kansas City. And as many of you know, he is actually the CEO of Unity Worldwide Ministries and travels around to all the Unity churches all around the country. And he brings with himself a really neat, interesting take and has great fun talks. So definitely come check out our 11 a.m. service next week. All right, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. So usually this is the part where we, it's a call for prayer, but today we're just gonna sing, and it, they say to sing is to pray twice. If you have a prayer need, there are prayer sheets in front of you. You can fill out the name or, and what's going on and put it in the prayer box at the completion of the service, and it'll be prayed over for 30 days, and they'll be sent to Unity Village, and Silent Unity will pray of it for another 30 days. Um, so let's just all stand, and we're just gonna sing this song. It's an easy one, it's catchy. As long as you feel comfortable standing, obviously. Okay, here we go. We're gonna sing for all of Boulder to hear us. We're gonna vibrationally bring all this love out into the universe. 
every time I feel lifted and they're like, oh my God, that's unity. We have to go back to unity. Oh, you forgot how unity fills our spirits and makes us thrive in life. God for this beautiful day and turn and meet one another say say thank you God for me and thank God for you and thank God for everything that's alive and we want to thank God for Marsha being here now pat yourself on the back and say thank you God for me and have a great day filled with health energy and love.
Now I'd like to welcome up uh, to our stage today's musical guests. You might remember these two from a few weeks ago. They played uh, some Zydeco music uh, for a Mardi Gras celebration we recently had. This is Amy Glennie. Am I saying that right? Amy Glennie and John Sherman. Um, they are known, they've been playing together on and off for many years. They're known from everything from country to Celtic to Zydeco music. Um, but they're always strongly influenced by Amy's Appalachian uh, musical upbringing. And they've got a new album coming out called I'm With You. You don't by any chance have any of those to sell, do you? No? Okay. This was your chance? Oh, no, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just joking. But Amy, John, take it away. Be here again. Whoa. So glad to be here again. So grateful. Um, it just makes me so happy to see all of your faces and to play music with you. Um, so we made you guys work a little last time, if you were here last time. Uh, we're going to invite you to sing the chorus of both the songs that we're going to do. Um, and the words will be up here. Uh, you don't have to like sound amazing, but I know you will. Um, and I'll just go over the, the chorus just so you know how it goes just real slowly. And I ask you friends, so the, you lower singers are gonna say, and I ask you friends, okay? All right, repeat after me. And I ask you friends, tell me what would you do? Cause her hair was black and her eyes were blue. Cause her hair was black and her eyes were blue. And I knew right then I'd be taking a whirl Down the salt hill prom with a Galway girl So John's going to tell you a little bit about this song real quick. Yeah, we'll keep this brief because we have a full, full morning, but thanks to everybody for having us out again. Happy St. Patrick's Day. So there's been a lot of overlap between Irish and American music. Irish immigrants came over to this country and then Irish people immigrated back to Ireland. Irish people brought their music here and then Irish people brought some American music back. So this is actually an American song called Galway Girl. It's a big hit in Ireland, very popular there. They're, they've sort of adopted it. So it goes like this. Well, I took a stroll on the old long walk on the day I Because her hair is black and her eyes are blue. Now I'm trying to 
Bueno. Thank you so much. What fun. Who needs pubs when you can have this in church, right? During the Lenten season while we're all sacrificing at the moment. <laughs> that music just lifts you and alters you and it's wonderful. So today my talk title is t titled, Closer is the Holy Spirit than Breathing and Nearer than Hands and Feet. Often we try to get clear about what our goals are, figuring out a five or ten year plan, making treasure maps, identifying those with those we wish to emulate, but we should think about our spiritual goals as well. The question shouldn't just be, where do I want to be in five or ten years? It should also be, where do I want to be spiritually in five or ten years, or in a week, or six months, or a year? How long until we can move beyond judgment and blame? How long until we stop playing a victim? How long until we can forgive ourselves and forgive others? Our goal in any situation should be that God's will be done. We'll be told exactly what we need to do and know in every instant that our hearts are open. God speaks to us through what is called the small, still voice. Through forgiveness, prayer, and meditation, we can quiet the mind enough to be able to hear it. And I love the statement from The Course in Miracles. The question is, where would you have me go? What would you have me do? What would you have me say and to whom? Completely and totally putting our lives in the hands of the Holy Spirit, the Creator, God. Whatever word makes you feel embraced and loved. None of these words, they all just identify this the mystery, the spiritual energy that moves in and through absolutely everything when we allow it. The only one that blocks us from our miracles and blocks us from stepping into new territories that can heal and resolve anything that's in our way is us. We stand in the way of that. But when we open up into surrender and recognize that with God, all things are possible. With Creator, all things are possible. Right? So that's what this talk is about today. Um, today is the the 25th day of our 40-day walk in the Lenten season. This journey is an individual one with spirit awakening in the inner workings of the beloved self, coming out of dormancy, and we're entering into second sight. We're getting into the point where we're going to start to be, have these really clear, intuitive pushes and an awakened knowing. It's very exciting. We're at this point. We've, we've released for three weeks Something that was standing in the way, like a smoke screen, that played God more than God actually plays in our lives. So some of us left sugar for the 40 days, some left alcohol and drugs, some left a, a relationship that was no longer growing, or we left things that were a shelter that weren't necessarily positive and were more toxic in our lives so that we could convene and come back to the original one love that there is, which is between us and spirit. This journey is an individual one and we're moving in to receiving the things we have prayed for. The 40 days of Lent have historically been a time of fasting, prayer, and study for those wishing to grow closer to spirit. It can be a time for personal and collective reflection and transformation. It is a time to look honestly at ourselves and to contemplate our relationship with this greater power we call Creator, Spirit, God. So I want to share this slide, and it's in the book, The Gift of Change by Marian Williamson. This is a critical time in all our lives because it's a critical time on earth. Each of us has the opportunity now to grow into the fullness of our divine potential in order to take our place in God's plan. The plan exists in the mind of God, and to the extent to which we surrender our thinking to him, spirit, mother earth, we take our part. Our primary function is to stand in the light of who we are and become the people we are capable of being. From that, all guilt good will follow. Our primary function is to stand in the light of who we are. So does anybody want to share what they gave up for Lent? You can just speak it out. Has anybody made it to this point in their Lent sacrifices? <laughs> Like, can we see at least one hand? Okay, good job. 
I love it. I love it. We're so committed to this spiritual journey, I just can't. I have. Um, and this was the hardest week of the whole thing. So the longer that break from this thing that we've decided to step away from and build an, a deep in relationship with spirit, uh, we were talking last week about the trickster and how the old habit wants to come back. So it starts to convince you to be easier to go back to the old habit instead of moving forward, still going towards this spiritual goal of union. And so the natives talk about a trickster, or in the Bible, there's different names for it, but it's a distraction, and it's the ego that wants to say, no, it's okay if I still have this really difficult, abusive relationship in my life, or it's still really okay, because it's more comfortable for me to go here, even though I'm going to let myself down, and I'm not going to live within alignment of what my soul is saying I need to do, right? We've been revealed in these days to how wonderful it feels to be in communion with spirit. But there's these moments where the day goes bad and it gets hard and we have this old behavior that we'd run to that gave us shelter for minutes, but in the end it made us feel awful. We knew it wasn't right and it was time to step out of it. So it's really about starting something new and sticking to it. You know, it's like when we have to start exercising again and we want to face it. You can't just go to the gym once and it's fixed. Right? We have to keep going, and then eventually it just becomes second nature because we learn to love it because we love how we feel. Right? It's that kind of a feeling. It's a practice. It's a prayerful process that we put in our meditations. Um, it's, we wake up with it. We, we're inspired by it. And when we have a bad day in Lenten, we go, but there's always a new day tomorrow, right? We're unearthing. We're healing. We're going to face some of the damages that we've had in our lives, and we've got to face them. And we have to be with them. That's part of it. It's about grieving the cuts that made us feel less than connected with God and, and small and not lovable or worthy, right? So um, this last week has been strenuous for many, including myself. My counseling schedule tripled, so that is always a good indication that I'm not the only one who unearthed depths of inner duality, past worn-out responses to present life, unhealed beliefs that are limiting or physical issues that are no longer needed or wanted or necessary in our lives. I realize that we are, are really going into it now. Like this is the week where we're going, you know, this last week was like, it was an unearthing. Every day I was in an unearthing of some things. Um, and, there, and there will be no rug unturned when we really put ourselves, we take to task our relationship with this greater something. We have to take to task in the human part of ourselves where we've let ourselves down. It's usually about our own forgiveness for ourselves that we've let ourselves be in the face of things that were so not good for ourselves. That we loved ourselves so little that we would do things to fill the voids in our life instead of stepping abundantly into the Christ potential that we each and every one of us are, right? Um, so there will be no rug unturned, whether we like it or not. If we're going to really go through this metaphysical death, which we're on, that's what the Lenten season's about, is about letting go of the things that no longer serve us. Jesus showed us this example. We must forgive the past. Forgive those we perceive have wronged us. To let go of ill health and take on new practices for healing to stop looking at the lack in our bank accounts and speaking truth and prosperity into our heart and breathing new spiritual life into our relationships with our significant others, friends, children. For a healing and harmonious life, this is when we step into our true resurrection or our awakening. When one stage of life gives way to another, it's the end of an era and the beginning of a new one. How we navigate such transitions spiritually will determine the joy or despair that comes next. In navigating any change, we may be tempted toward wither of two extremes, resisting the change on the one hand, which looks like we're dealing with a little bit of that here. <laughs> I thought you were gonna be with me. I mean, I thought you all had the same week I did for the last week. How was everybody's week this last week? Was it awesome? Who had a hard week? So I guess, you know, spiritually, you were in the Lenten season with me. So I'm going to bring you along with me, and you can step in today. Okie dokie. We may be tempted toward wither of two extremes, resisting the change on the one hand or being reckless toward it on the other. 
These extremes are really the flip sides of an ego-based response to change. The deeper spiritual task is to achieve moderation by avoiding both extremes. Moderation is emotional sobriety, bringing a deep and considered awareness of both the pitfalls and the opportunities inherent, inherent in any situation. It implies a capacity for reflection, an ability to stay aware and act responsibly no matter what's occurring. Without moderation, change can be more damaging than miraculous. But no matter whether a change is happy or sad, it can be a sacred experience if we're spiritually awake. If we're spiritually awake. So last week we were talking about things falling away or finally stepping into letting things go. Even though it can be extremely difficult and there's very deep periods of grief through this journey, right? There's many deaths and res resurrections. There's not just one in a lifetime. There's probably one every few years, and there's probably a really big one every 10 years. Change is part of life, and it's a matter of how we're willing to step into life. Are we willing to step into it fully and awake and aware that every single day we have the opportunity to become the miracle we want to see in our lives? Or do we still believe somebody outside of us can fix something in our life? Do you believe that something outside a circumstance, a human being, a, a wonderful windfall, will bring the peace to your life? Something outside of you that spirit can't do for you first. See, it all comes from this direct connection, this belief in this greater something. It's a faith trip. It's growing our faith in this greater something that has our back, that is here only to love us. It's only based in love. And all the hardship that we face is created by our human experience that believes that something outside of us can heal this brokenness in us. There's nothing out there. Look at the world right now. Like she said, there's nothing else we can do at this point other than change ourselves. And, it, and, and changing ourselves can just be a tuning of a string. It doesn't have to be some massive overcoming of a mountain. It's just a change, it's a choice, it's a thought, it's a love, it's a desire, it's a healing, it's a knowing that we are a perfect child of God. And I say this every week, nothing can hurt me, nothing can make me sick, nothing can make me afraid if I know that I am a perfect extension of God. So what do I need to allow into my life that can bring this kind of glory, this kind of resurrection into my current situation that we're drowning in, or we're discussing that's not good and it's not easy, right? We have to start planting seeds of hope. What are we gonna bring into our life? So I had this happen this week. I've had a situation in my life for the last few years that I have needed to offer more conscious communication with. I've been very aware that I've needed to face this circumstance because it's something that has brought inner anguish in my life. But every attempt I have made to tackle this topic with the powers that be, I've been shut down or been given com commitments of change on their parts that has gone on unchanged, causing some deep frustration and a feeling of not knowing how to create harmony around the situation. Does anybody relate with that? Where we're just, you're trying, you're trying to do a peaceful advance with something, trying to change something. But when we have to co-create with human beings, we have to find that ascended moment where all, all of us are ready to change. And that's the difficult part, right? Bringing the spirituality into our relationships with our partners, bringing the spirituality with our relationship with our children. So first we kind of have to take the task ourselves, then we start to jump into things of the collaboration changes of our lives, right? Um, so the interaction didn't go well, causing some deep frustration and a feeling of not knowing how to create harmony around the situation. So I attempted to have the conversation this week. And the person that appeared to the meeting was a six-year-old version of myself. The one that had her first cut in life that showed her she wasn't lovable, respected, or appreciated. Hence, my tone took a direction that was not harmonious. She was speaking from her pain body, and once again, I'm left with the exact same response from the parties involved. I left that chat feeling so bad, there are no words. I was triggered, I was hurting, I was in a state of wanting to give up. I came home and told Mike, I just have to go on a walk. 
with my dog and clear my head and figure out just how I could have responded to this conversation in such a way. I showed up to this park that I walk in with Gilly all the time, my dog. And the second I walked into the park, there was a woman I knew from over 15 years ago. I really didn't want to see anyone. I couldn't talk to anyone at that moment. I had nothing to give, but I couldn't avoid it. I love this woman. I hadn't seen her in a long time. I just didn't have any more to give. I talked with her, and within 10 minutes of a conversation, I found out this woman had lost her dad, her brother, in the last year, and she just found out her sister's dying from cancer. So I talked with her and realized I had to attend this conversation. After I completed the conversation, I had no life force left and just walked to my car and drove home with the deadest feeling in myself. I was recognizing the responsibility of my role in this life and how I have to hold it. It's, it just pushes and pushes me to be present for others. I question if I can keep doing it day after day. Obviously, I was just having a bad moment. We all have bad moments. My ego was definitely defining the voice that I was hearing in my head. But I kept hearing the quote over and over again from Mark 19, 26. With God, all things are possible. The whole time I was talking to her, that, that quote, that affirmation was coming through me. It was like, I, Spirit was like, I'm, t I'm listening to this. You don't have to take this physically on, which, what's being shared. I'm listening to this, and I'm going to speak through you. And Spirit did but I kind of took it on because I'm an empath, and a lot of us that are on this spiritual journey are empaths. And when we're tired, is the most dangerous time to be like counseling someone because we'll take it on physically. And I was, my cup was not running over. It was like had a couple drops left in it. <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh, That's, but it did. I mean, literally, I didn't know if it had a drop in it to be honest. <laughs> I don't know why it's cracking me up. Okay. Because I'm telling you the truth, honestly. Like, I'm, it's, it's the light, the universe is honorable. <laughs> and I'm taking this journey and this Lenten process that I thought we were all on together, so that gave me support. <laughs> now I know I was just in it with God. Okay. I guess that's what it was all about in the first place. <laughs> oh, God bless it. Okay. <laughs> So, anyway, I was responding from a belief system that no longer lives in me, or does it? Through all my development, all that I have attained from the I am, I'm no longer the person that responded that way, or am I? <laughs> that, these are the questions, this is the duality we do, right? Because what, where, where, I've healed that six-year-old little girl, or have I, right? This is very important because the death and resurrection symbolically happens many times in a lifetime because there are so many dynamics of life. There's early childhood, the relationship with parents. There's the 20s where we think we have figured it all out and have been hurt by others and we've hurt others through that discovery. Then our 30s where we figure something out but the journey is about total revelation of self and in the hidden places within there is still cell memory, things that have unfinished business. And when we think we have it all figured out, woo, that's when it will get you. Every time you think you've actually really figured it all, all out, I've always had a rug pulled out from underneath me, so I don't do that anymore. This journey is a journey that's from day one till we get to the end of this lifetime, and then we pass, and we go into school on the other side, and then we come back in, and we join. And it's, so, it's, it's a growing process. We're here to grow, right? So... In the hidden places within, there is cell memory, things that have unfinished business. And when we think we have it all figured out, the mystery of life has been revealed to us. Another opportunity to growth, for growth is revealed. There hasn't been enough I am brought to this fractured part that still has life in our subconscious mind. So when we think we've healed stuff, there's different layers of things, right? It's a different point of view, but there's still the same hurt. Somewhere in me, I don't feel heard, right? And I, I, and I see that current in my life. Here, I have this job where people are listening to me all the time, but when it actually comes like my one-on-one -on -one relationships, I tend to come from this place that what I'm saying is not important to other people, right? So then I keep creating an outer picture with my relationships, my parents, my husband, and my children, 
that proves to me that I'm not important and what I say is not important. That's not their fault. That's because I'm harboring this limitation inside of myself, and we will always be proven by the outer world that what we believe ourselves is true. This is so important, right? So we have to really, really study the subconscious. That's what the meditation is about, is visiting these cracks, these fractured areas of our life, and truly and completely bring the I am, the greatest word for God. I am important. What I say has importance. I am really thoughtful. I am thoughtful going in this conversation. I know spirit can heal this, right? It's, it's working in the I am and the power that that is. It's spiritual power. It's not will power. I want it my way or the highway. I am is soft loving power and it takes practice one of the greatest classes we hold here is the conscious communication class that steve teaches this is what it's all about is becoming conscious communicators not only with others but most importantly to ourselves conscious communicators we can change what we're harboring and and i didn't even realize i was harboring that until i was in the situation and i'm like observing myself unraveling that's the old me but is it? Right? We have to really look at it from all the different lens lenses. St. Francis prayed, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. He was willing to be present and to be used as a vehicle for the divine energy, and he did not take credit for what was done through him. He was content to be the hollow reed through which the sound comes. When we don't need credit, we are content to be the flute in Krishna's hands. There's nothing more wonderful than being the empty vessel through which the universal energy moves. Every mother that gives birth knows the joy of being the vessel, even though the process of giving birth can be challenging. Being the vessel is the most miraculous experience probably for any mother, right? Everybody that I know that have had children, that is the most hands-on experience of feeling God that there is, and for fathers, obviously, to the level that they can take in what it was like to carry a child and to birth a child and to hold that kind of love in your arms and realize that you never really knew love till that moment. Paul Farini goes on to say it this way, changes that are needed for the soul to grow may be made voluntarily. There'll be challenges and growing pains as we learn to transform a life led in self-betrayal into a life that enables us to be honest and authentic. Voluntary change, co cooperating with our soul's need to grow can be made without collateral damage. But in voluntary change, change that comes after we have repeatedly refused to answer our soul's wake-up calls can shake our lives to their foundation. I'm going to reread this because this is very important because if you're getting pings that you have to face it and you have to go forward and you have to put feet underneath this vision, you're connected with God and Spirit is telling you, you need to step forward. You have to step in. You have to get your wings and step in even if you're in fear because otherwise this change is going to take place. And the universe is honorable. You've been warned. It's not even a warning. It's a call. Go. Trust. On the other side of this, this is where your joy, your happiness, your peace, your health lives. But if you keep sitting, living small, you're not stepping in and you're not going to experience the expansion of what God's trying to lead you to. Only you know whether or not you have been procrastinating and ignoring your soul's call for transformation. If you have, you might want to move everything else to the back burner and focus on making immediate changes in your life that end your self-betrayal. Oh, let's just like sit with that. Does anybody have anything on their heart right now that they're feeling that they have to step in, but we've been meekly climbing underneath the rock because we really don't want to deal with it because it's really a lot and it's going to really unearth other things and oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Because that's the one thing that it's talking about. I've been pushing this thing off that I have had to have a conversation about today, and it's not resolved, and I have to keep praying. 
and finding the way to be the love deliverer of this, not the six-year-old broken version of myself. So what does self-betrayal mean? You feel that you are a victim of circumstances. You don't feel worthy to tell your truth. You let fear drive your life. You don't believe that something wonderful is coming out of all this chaos. You believe your good has left you. Or you need to please everyone, which means you keep betraying yourself. That's a really big one. The need to please others is the greatest. You can never be everything for everyone. Okay, that's, that's just an illusion that a lot of people sign up with and they live very unhappy, unhealthy lives. You can be really great, but to try to be everything for everyone, that, that's the biggest swallower, the biggest self-betrayal you know, betrayal you can possibly do. So now let's close our eyes. And let's just get in this presence of this room. When a positive change is occurring in our lives, it's a good idea to take the time to sit quietly and breathe it in. In your mind's eye, see a picture of the new situation and imagine yourself functioning at your best within it. Breathing deeply. Get the feeling of what this new situation would feel like resolved. Feel the spirit of love surrounding you, encouraging you, and whispering to you that which you need to hear to finally trust that you've got this. You are this. You are the power that creates this. You are the I am. Which I am is calling you. I am brave. I am enough. I am happy. I am ready. I am healed. I am prosperous. Now with your eyes still closed, breathe deeply and feel yourself inwardly expanding into that possibility within yourself. Such exercises are not idle fantasies, but actual powers of the mind. What you say about your life, you create it. What you think about your life, you create it. We are the flower that emerges from the mud. Think of the lotus flower that's always in that mucky water, the most beautiful flower. See that ever expanding within you. See the petals emerging upwards looking for the sun, moving towards the light, closer and closer to the light. Dear God, Spirit Source, I surrender to you everything I think and feel. Please take my past and plan my future. Send your spirit to redeem my mind. 
that I might be set free. May I be your vessel and serve the world. May I be become who you would have me be, that I might do what you would have me do. And I will, Spirit, do it. That's when we will resurrect from the shadows to the light. And we will say, I see. I see now. I see, Spirit. I see now what I'm supposed to do. I feel now what I'm supposed to do. I am now the one who is to do it. And I'm free. And I'm at ease. And I'm thrilled to be the vehicle and the vessel for you in the enfoldment of my beautiful life in action. And so I thank you, thank you, God, Spirit, Source, for everything. I have no complaints whatsoever. And so we come back into this room truly regenerized and back in our life and ready to step in to the real transformation and resurrection where all your good begins. Amen. In unity, we are so blessed to be reminded that we have everything inside of us to thrive. And in unity, we are so blessed that we have everything inside of us as children of spirit to help transform this world. So when we ask you to donate here today, we really are asking you to just embrace your power as a child of spirit to transform this world and we have all these ways to give and if you're not sure which one is right for you you can just call us there at that number of the office and and uh, have faith that the Holy Spirit will guide you in the best way um, <clears throat> for you to participate in this flow so thank you <coughs> You know, I have a super advantage over all of you who are sharing in the inspiration that Sintisha is channeling out every Sunday because I knew her when. <laughs> so I get a double. I get a double when I'm here on Sunday. So magnificent to listen to the truth being shared so beautifully uh, and that she's really that person that puts it together. You can't really be uh, sharing the truth if you're not living it, you know? I know people try to do that, but it doesn't work out. You know how authentic it is right here when you're listening to her share these truths that we can transform our lives around. So with that beautiful message in mind, let's bring that financial gift we'd like to make into our hands and let's bless that gift with this offering prayer. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive because I give. And so it is. Oh, we have the beautiful Irish duo singing their music once again. such a gift to be here today. I'm so grateful.
tell us about this song, John? Well, this is actually, this is a traditional Irish song. It was originally a children's song, and there was a whole children's uh, game that associated with the, with this song. Um, we we're not going to do that today, but <laughs> it's, a, it's a fun, happy sing-along song. It has a lot of words. Almost sounds like rap there in the middle of it, but uh, Amy's going to teach you the chorus. <laughs> yeah, and we'll start with the chorus. It's, it's pretty catchy. Um, it goes, I'll tell me ma when I go home, the boys won't leave the girls alone. Fold me hair and stole me comb, but that's all right to like at home. She's handsome, she's pretty, she's the belle of Dublin City. She's a garden, one, two, three, pray won't you tell me who is she? All right, you ready? You all got that? <laughs> <laughs> You'll have it by the end, and you will have it in your head for about a week, and I'm sorry, in advance. <laughs> I've had it in my head for a couple weeks now. Albert Mooney says he loves her, all the boys are fighting for her. Knock at the door and they ring the bell, saying, oh, me true love, are you well? Up she comes as white as snow, rings on her fingers and bells on her toes. No, Jenny Murray says she'll die if she doesn't get the fellow with a robe and I. I'll tell me ma when I go home, the boys won't leave the girls alone. Tell me hair, stole me comb, but that's all right till I go home. She's handsome, she's pretty. She's a card in one, two, three. Pray, won't you tell me who is she? Clap along with John. are amazing. Let's, let's say thank you again. So much fun. Love to have a concert with you guys. You are just awesome. Really great. The only thing we, ha we have to do, right, we're having the potluck after this service, right? Mm -hmm. Can somebody get a keg of Guinness? 
<laughs> yeah, all right. Puts it all together, you know what I'm saying? We're in Lenten, what? in the Lenten season. No kegs during the potluck. We can be forgiven. Okay. <laughs> all right, so tomorrow night at 7, you have an awesome opportunity to come and sing and dance and drum for our spring equinox ceremony at 7 p.m. It just They just take a donation, so it's free to get in, and if you can tie something back to it, you can. We'd love to have you there. Men, women, everyone are, are welcome to come. And then we have prayer partners available to you that are sitting over here with their sashes on. Please stand up. If you have a prayer need to, today, you can stay seated in your seat, and they will come and find you and pray with you and mirror back the power that's living within you so that you can leave here bright and ready to step into this miraculous life. We have a potluck right now after the service. You have about 15 minutes to go grab a dish to share, and then we will all eat together. So we won't have the circle, the discussion circle after the service. We'll discuss in the potluck itself. So we'd love to have you all there. Is there anything else? No, you just have to decide to show up for the potluck. And, you can take and if you don't have anything, we have food that we've put in there too. So you can yeah, stay we have, as well. We have cat food. Yeah, no. <laughs> We have pizza, I think, is what we have. All right, let's all close with our closing few songs here. I uh -huh. really on earth. Here we go.